Okay, so I've seen some of your requests. I know a few people requested in comments, a few people requested it in my guild, so I am making it just for you, just for you specifically. Hero Boiling Waterfall Naraka Guide. So I will cover some of the most important stuff you need to know. So uh, I'm not gonna cover like the best damage dealers, all of the basic stuff like that. Mostly just the mechanics, some of the units that might benefit you and all of that. So let's go. Okay, so first of all, for the teams, uh, you can start with your regular damage dealer team, uh, whatever you have. We'll do, I would do recommend having at least a cleanser in two, unless you are very good at dodging and you're confident and your whole party will be able to dodge skills, but if not, do have a cleanser on two and at least one healer for us. We have one cleanser, we have two healers who are very strong, so uh, it shouldn't be an issue, but yeah. Going forward with the run, this is a successful run we had. Uh, the first part is really nothing special, just dodge these as with the regular Naraka as they do a little bit more damage and you don't really want to be starting to get burned and the first phase you will encounter will begin at 80% uh, HP, essentially when the boss drops to 80%. So we're gonna wait for that and yeah, there we go, uh, this one. Previously, you could dodge this ability, but or rather you could not dodge this ability but this time it actually strips buffs and gives you block beneficial effects so uh, previously it was just heal block now it's blood beneficial effects which first of all you are not able to deceive attack up which will hinder your damage a lot so uh, you can cleanse it but again you need a cleanser that does two cleanses at least Adel only does one, so unless you're bringing something like a Fire Paladin or Camilla for whatever reason, I would recommend just dodging that ability. It usually comes at around 80%, so you know when to time it, you know when to have at least like two or three evasion stacks and dodge it. Now, for the shield phase. So previously, Naraka only had this 99% uh, shield on himself. Basically, he only takes 1% of the damage you actually do and uh, he loses that shield once you do a certain amount of damage. Now the hero raid also has an unremovable shield for exactly 2.5% of his HP. If I can find it somewhere here, let me see, there we go. Uh, yeah, shield equal to 2.5% of his HP. Now why this is important is previously you could just do a lot of damage and be done with the shield, now, uh, you can technically still do it, but it just makes it that much more difficult because uh, you are not breaking this shield until uh, the top of the shield is broken. And to break that shield, you will need to do way, way more damage. So think about it. Uh, if the damage is reduced by 99%, you do need to do 100 times more damage in order to break the shield. Now, the easy way to overcome this is, first of all, have a damage taken up effect, which increases your damage a lot, or have a unit that actually ignores uh, all of the buffs on the boss. Now, it does really sadden me that you do not see any of the units that actually ignore beneficial effects in the top used units, uh, because they do make the job way, way easier. And uh, you ask some of them, I will show you some of them here, so... Uh, probably the most budget one would be uh, Cassie. She is an at 3 or rather an at 4 uh, and she does ignore uh, that shield with all three of her abilities, basically both skills and uh, her basic attack. But because she is an at 4, she will not do as much damage as an at 5 would. And for nat 5s, there are a few options. So there is the Karambit, uh, there is the Lupinus, who I am using personally right now. And I believe there was one more. No, it looks, looks like there isn't. Uh, now, if you do have some of these units, I mean, I personally wouldn't recommend using uh, the Dragon Knights. They're sort of like, they, their abilities don't do as much damage. You may mostly want to use units that usually benefit from basic attacks because uh, they are like your secondary damage dealers. Uh, whereas uh, Nadin Ha or Argen is your main damage dealer that you want to spam with mana. For these ones, they are sort of like secondary DPS that you want just sitting in the background and doing damage as much as they can. And usually secondary DPS uh, work best with a lot of attack speed because they won't be able to use skills as often. But yeah, once you break the shield, 
uh, as you can see here, I will show you the effect uh, that these beneficial effect ignoring DPS units have. So uh, let me just quickly slow down the video a lot. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Video. Let me find it. There we go. We got it playing. Bad quality, but that works. So we're waiting for it to disappear. It disappeared. Look at that. Took like half a second in order to finish up uh, the rest of the shield due to the insane damage that you do. And yes, I do not want to have the playing on my network. But yeah, once the shield drops, you have a lot of time to do damage. If you are, if you do have good teammates and you are pretty decently ruined yourself, uh, there's a good chance you will be able to skip this phase, especially if you use those OP uh, Tiana Verde heal plus one damage dealer combos. Now for the minion phase, uh, yeah, with this one, it's very annoying because uh, there are uh, sort of a new mechanic in this. So previously, the regular minions only needed uh, the shield removed with any CC effect, which was very easy. I used a tractor with a provoke or something like that, and it was pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Now there is also these. So there will be three additional minions, and these can only be frozen this regular cc doesn't work but you can apply freeze to freeze them and you can apply frostbite while they are frozen in order to increase that freeze so yeah as you can see here if level 2 frostbite is applied freeze for seven seconds so you can go e either route you want i personally i uh, go for the freeze or i even just ignore them if you have a certain unit but yeah uh, some of the units that you will need are someone who can frostbite now do not be uh, tricked by something like Naninha, her frostbite is very bad and it will not work for you at all. But yeah, for units, I mean, there are single targets like uh, the Water Imp. In most cases, there is actually a very interesting edge pick, uh, Chow, because his second skill, if you notice this, uh, every two seconds when Dragon's Energy activated, right? So if he has Dragon's Energy, Whenever this skill is live, every two seconds he will apply Frostbite uh, to nearby enemies uh, for 20 seconds. So if you do time it correctly, uh, you will be removing a lot of harmful effects because those minions apply you. So if you are someone who's getting targeted by those uh, Infernos, you can actually pick a Chow, stand next to them, and uh, he will continuously apply Frostbite and they will essentially be permanently frozen. However... You do need to stand next to them, so maybe this will only work if you are a cleave, right? Uh, it will be a little bit harder if you are a range unit, because even when Saleta, like, whenever she uses a skill, uh, she will fall back, for example, so that's a bit annoying. Now, if you don't want to build a net 2, or rather a net 5, uh, there is a net 3 that I actually use, and that is Nubia. So, previously I covered him, he's an awesome unit in PvP as well, but... Uh, if you look at the skill, uh, this is a 2 mana skill, it is an AoE skill, damage, whatever, we don't care about that, uh, we care about his passive. So, whenever you attack with any skill, you have a 90% chance to freeze an enemy for 2.7 seconds. Now, this does counter the elementals and it also counters the regular minions because freeze is a CC effect. Now, if you want to make sure that the uh, CC effect definitely lands, especially on the regular minions, can also put him on despair i personally have mine uh on despair as well i'll show you the build in a second uh where are you where are you? yeah so i have a uh, regular despair uh i think this was my animal set yeah you don't really need any stat but yeah uh, i have him on hp i don't really expect him to do damage but you can build him on the damage for me it's just important that he survives so he has this for now uh, but yeah, coming back to the video, uh, you will notice, especially if you are someone who's getting targeted, right? If you see that the minions are coming to you, uh, the problem is you will be stunned for quite a long time. So yeah, if you see minions coming to you, especially more than one, uh, one unit that I would recommend is an Anadol. So she can defense break, which can help with a little bit of damage on a wave of minions. Uh, she does have a cleanse and a heal on her first skill, which is sort of like an emergency for you. And also, uh, she has a passive. So her passive, every two seconds, if you receive a CC effect, she will remove it automatically. So uh, since those minions do give a lot of CC effects and they strip all buffs, immunity will not work for you. 
uh, anvil is another option to mitigate probably like uh, from my experience like half of the CC and yeah, as you can see the third unit you can go for a healer if you're struggling I went for Lupinus because Lupinus remember Lupinus does ignore a uh, beneficial effect uh, beneficial effect ignoring damage which these minions have so uh, he is actually able to do damage to these minions without even breaking the shield yeah uh, but yeah you will see that I'm um, basically to deal with the regular minions I am uh, spamming the water mummies uh, skill to which is only two mana he has a smaller range but he as you can see is able to freeze and disperse them uh, with it which allows me to deal with this easily if you are a cliff and you have your ultimate i would highly recommend using the ultimate on this wave as well uh, in most cases you will not need the ultimate for damage after the minion phase so uh, since you do have knockback on it, uh, it's a really good skill, I think. Soleta's ultimate is really good for this as well, especially the light Soleta since she ignores buffs. But yeah, as you can see, uh, the minion started targeting me and whenever I get stunned, my uh, animal simply cleanses it at least like half of the time. And whenever I get low, I just start healing a bit. Yeah, so let's wait for a stun. Maybe we can see it. Am I getting stunned? Am I getting stunned? Yeah, my Lupin has dropped quite a bit. But yeah, that's how I deal with it. As you can see, you can just freeze them like that if they are giving you trouble. But uh, another pro tip, this is sort of not for dealing with them, but for the whole team, especially if you have a pre-made. If you see a person getting all three Infernos, don't slack, help them. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't think that's what I did in this run because if someone doesn't have an animal, for example, it's it's very hard for them to deal uh, with those minions, right? Like, if you have a right team, like uh, what something like I showed you, you will be able to deal with some minions, maybe not the whole wave, but yeah, especially if there is like no fire uh, in the middle, right? Unfortunately, this run, there was fire. But uh, another great side is... And I know some people mistake this. The middle doesn't actually burn you. Uh, it does seem like there is fire, but there isn't actually. So you can stand in the middle and you can just simply spam the CC effects to not only clean your wave from those shields, but also uh, clean all the other waves because minions will start from there. So if you have uh, a CC unit with very high range, like a Tractor's Provoke skill one or something like a Louise. Uh, the Wind Paladin skill 2, who not only provokes everyone in a very big range, but also gives you a shield, gives you a tag buff, gives you a heal, all of that. Just stand in there, try to take a wave or two, and it will make, especially for whoever has to deal with those uh, Infernos, it will make the wave a bit easier, right? So yeah, and apart from that, uh, really there isn't much to cover. I think I covered the shield phase, I think I covered the... Uh, minion phase apart from that just do damage please don't shy away from using a uh, damage mitigation units uh you're not only helping yourself but your whole party as well because as you can see if you are someone who lacks damage a bit it's kind of gonna be hard to break a shield and as you can see again whenever that drops the shield will become it, it just destroys instantly so yeah uh very highly recommend bringing at least like two units who ignore uh, damage effects right potentially three would be best one for each a loop in a beat if you really don't want to invest a lot bring at least a kasi uh, the dark cowgirl but yeah that's about it for uh, the highly requested guide and yeah peace